Welcome everybody. My name is Tamar Friedman and I'm the Senior Manager of Programs and Member Education here at Jewish Funders Network. And today we are excited to be able to come together to talk to people that are going to be joining us for the first time at um, our upcoming conference to talk about what to expect and to give some pointers um, to how, how to have the best experience that you can possibly have when we all get together in a few weeks in Palm Beach. So before we get started, I wanted to give just a moment or two of some history of JFN and of the conference. So the conference started, and JFN started with a conference in 1991 by progressive funders that wanted to connect more deeply about issues related to impactful philanthropy. And from that, JFM was actually born. And it is, of course, grown and professionalized since then in an incredible way. One way that we see that is the growth of our conference. 10 years ago, we only had 275 conference attendees. And this year, we have 530 people registered so far plus an additional probably around 100 staff and speakers. So it's an incredible growth in the last um, decade. And 20% of that um, number of registrants are first time attendees, just like all of you that are on the call. And with that little bit of context and reference, I wanted to introduce introduce um, our, one of our co-chairs of this year's conference, Shula Moses. Shula is the chair of the Moses Wolferwitz Foundation in Israel. And we want to thank you so much for being with us today. And thank you for all that you've done to create the, our conference. And with that, I will, I will um, go to you, Shula. Thank you. Thank you, Tamar. And uh, welcome, everybody. Um, Today in Israel, uh, I understand that there are first comers not only from Israel, but from all over the world. And so um, uh, today in Israel, we are still focused uh, on the Israeli elections that, that took, uh, uh, took place yesterday. We still don't have the final results. And um, I hope the results will lead to the formation of a government that I we'll be able to be proud of. Um, also, of course, in Israel, we are preoccupied with the coronavirus. Um, uh, but I think that for the time being, it is contained uh, here in Israel. And I will leave it, uh, let's talk about uh, nicer things. So my, this is my fourth JFN conference. And what I can tell you about it is uh, that the conference is a very good place to interact with one another, uh, to come together uh, as philanthropists, to share common interests, to display freely our passion, our concerns, to learn from each other, and to develop impactful partnerships in the field uh, that we are um, most uh, knowledgeable about and passionate about, feel that will make a difference. And this year, um, uh, David here um, um, led a very, very intensive uh, work team for all year uh, till now in order to create a very, very interesting conference. And I'm sure that it will be interesting for you and impactful and it will help you. We hope to hold a serious Jewish conversation about the ethics of our philanthropy. And about when I say ethics, it's not just a discussion of the source of our, of our wealth, if it's ethical or not, but the reflection of our moral and ethical behavior as philanthropists. I, um, uh, I am very concerned with it. It's uh, something that I would, it's very important uh, to me personally, and I think that it's important for many, many of us. For, uh, of us. So we'll have this opportunity in the, in the conference. Uh, another opportunity, it will be to reflect our responsibility as philanthropists as we face threats to our democracy 
and the freedom around the world. Um, you know, you all, all of you know what's happening all over the world. So what is our um, responsibility and our task in this situation? Um, also in our passion to drive, to change the world and to make uh, partnerships and to have more partners, uh, it is our responsibility to be wary of a donor-driven environment, uh, impose it its will on, on the civil society. What I mean by this is that sometimes we as donors or donors are um, uh, contributing to our projects. Uh, have in mind something very specific that it's not always what the organization uh, is um, really acting upon. So um, um, we all want to be uh, cooperative, we all want more donors, more partners, and we have to be very, very careful uh, which partner um, has the same passion as we have, uh, is interested in what we do and not uh, make us, um, and we don't make others to go into fields that are not the ones that they are interested in. On. Uh, in the conference, the informal atmosphere enables us to use it in the corridor to have um, conversations, to go to the bar and the lounge, and especially in this hotel in Palm Beach, uh, and have a meaningful and passionate discussion uh, on our roles and responsibilities as philanthropists. Um, I strongly recommend and wish that each one of uh, the first time attendee goes uh, to the um, uh, lunch event and the networking in, on Sunday, March 22nd, which will take pl place at 11.30 a.m because it will be an opportunity to meet your peers and to learn uh, how impactful the conference and JFN can be to your philanthropy. And uh, um, this is what I have to say. You'll have questions then af afterwards, probably. Like we say in the, in the okay. Israel television. <laughs> Very good, thank you. Thank you for all those different perspectives and I really uh, appreciate that. And it's a great way to, to start and to get some intention and some real good um, advice on best ways to think about conference and what to look out for. And now it's my pleasure to introduce David Ezer, who is the Vice President of Programs here at Jewish Funders Network and really the architect behind, the, behind our annual conferences. And so he'll be here to, to share a lot of detail and, and advice. Thank you, David. Thanks, Tamara. So, hi, everybody. I'm excited to have the conference in a few weeks. Obviously, we're in a state of some uncertainty with the, with the public health situation, but and I'm sure the question is on your mind. Uh, as of now, you know, I want to start with this because I'm sure it's, it's sort of everybody's top question, um, and then I'll launch into sort of our, our general stuff. But as of now, we are we are planning to go ahead as planned. We are taking additional precautions on site, as I'm sure many of you have seen in our email and in the uh, and and on the website. Now, we are looking at options of of maybe having a you know a medical tent or, or further facilities on site to allow for you know anybody who does get there and feels uh, feels ill to be sure that they can get tested and taken care of quickly. But I think that's that's for a little farther down the road. Um, but for right now, obviously the the the, the spread is, seems to be slow. It does not seem to be you know the the rate of infection is or or, or the risk of infection is low. Uh, we are following all CDC and World Health Organization guidelines uh, and keeping close between the hotel and all of our partners to to ensure them you know as as safe an option as is po as as is possible under, under any circumstances. So I'm happy to answer other questions at the, at the end of the presentation on this, but let's assume that all is well and we are, we are convening in three weeks. And on that basis, um, I'm happy to 
uh, bring you in, you should be seeing my screen, one hopes. Um, and if that's the case, I want to talk to you a little bit about who's coming uh, so you get a sense of, the, of who you'll find at the, at the event. Um, we have right now 520 registrants plus another 150 or so uh, speakers who are invited on, on different sessions or other guests or media, uh, JFN staff and other, and other vendors and the like. So we are a big bustling group at close to 700 people. We are looking about 50% of them are, are funders, individual donors or trustees of foundations. Maybe 40% are, are the professional staff. And the balance is, our, is a little mix of the staff in who work in the allocations or executive side and public charities like federations, a few philanthropy consultants, and a handful of others, philanthropy support organizations. We have 130 first time attendees. This is fairly standard year to year to see about 20, 25%. So you are in good company. And again, that's to reinforce Shula. It's a, it's a, if you're available and you can do it, we really do recommend coming to the 1130 first timer networking meeting and orientation on Sunday morning, as it's a great chance to meet some of the board and leadership and start to get a little comfortable with the, with the setting and with each other. And then you'll have familiar faces right from the, the beginning of your time. Uh, there are 85 Israelis. Um, we expect that number may come down a little bit as as travel advisories change over the next couple of weeks, but we expect we will still see some, many, one hopes. Um, but that's a great set of, of Israeli registrants. Uh, I mean, that's a great number for a US conference. There are about 20 young uh, Israeli young funders who are coming uh, and, who, and who will be in attendance along with about 20, 25 uh, American young funders. And we have 15 registrants from places outside the North America Israel access. That's a mix of Australia, a little bit of Europe, uh, a blend in, uh, in, I think there's one from Brazil. So it's a, it's a nice crowd and you'll see, you'll see quite a lot of great people. Um, as you've probably seen on the schedule on Sunday morning, March 22nd, there are a couple of pre-conference programs that start as early as 9 a.m. We've talked about the first time we're meeting. The formal start of the conference is 2 p.m. with the opening plenary. Uh, for those of, uh, for conference information, those of you who, who do need to know, the conference, all conference catering is provided by Greenside Catering, which is Glatt Kosher, Orthodox Hashgacha. I'm happy to show anybody the certificate if they need. They are the premier kosher caterers in South Florida. I've been to tastings and I'm, I think we're going to <laughs> have great food. Um, the all meals that are served in the hotel are Glatt Kosher, except for one hosted dinner, which is not being handled by Greenside. Uh, if you're not in that dinner, then there's no issue. And if you did want to go to that program, we can certainly, and, you're, and you keep kosher, we can certainly arrange for a kosher meal through other options. If you do need kosher on Monday night, there are a few options. We do have an additional, the, of, the, of the hosted dinners that are kosher, we have an, an optional meal. If you're not going to one of those programs, and there is a kosher restaurant, just a little Mediterranean grill kind of place just up the street. Uh, this is, you know, it's a business casual event. We are relatively relaxed. I think you'll see many men uh, with no ties, many, many without, you know, just not even wearing jacket, just a regular button down shirt. You know, um, it's, it is fairly relaxed overall. With our opening night party, because we're doing this at the conference hotel and we're doing it on a theme of Jewish camp and having lots of activities and games and, and we're sort of out back on the golf course, we are uh, encouraging everyone to sort of dress dress much more casually, camp t-shirts are welcome, jean short sneakers will all be in keeping and it should be a lovely Florida warm night and we're excited for that. Um, so those of you know who have not been before, we do have media present. It is only, f it is all uh, friendly US Jewish media. The, uh, they are, uh, there is basically, in, to get an understanding of the, the community and to do some reportage, they are all, they all are aware that the basic rules are that registrants, if you're speaking in sessions, if you're speaking in hallways, are off the record unless they specifically ask and get your permission to be quoted. 
Uh, so you can feel, you should feel free to, free to speak freely, not to worry about who's, who's there listening to you. Uh, and of course, all media per personnel do have a, a, a badge ribbon that says, that says media. Um, so you will not have any confusion or concerns. But of course, the number one reason outside of the, the program that people come and what we want to help ensure you all have the best experience with is, is, is a networking and being able to meet other people. We have a great set of ways to help you do that. There are two lounges in our, in our hotel space, which will be hangout spaces through the entire conference program, one indoor, one outdoor. There's lots of activities and network and stations and things that you can use there, which will help inspire conversation. Uh, or just to be just to help engage one another to understand who else is, is at the conference. The app itself, if you have not started or the the online version of the website, the like there's another version of the website or the the online version of the app on the website also allows you to search the attendee list and search people's interests and, and communicate with them. And we'll show you I'll show you a little bit here and then we'll have a, a deeper app demo after the uh, after the half hour here. Uh, we have uh, an MC comedian who will, who's an Israeli Olim, who is a cross-cultural trainer and a great comedian and good guy. And he's gonna be not only hosting many of the, the sessions and plenaries, but he will also be available for helping you work the app, helping you meet who you wanna meet, um, basically serving as the sort of master connector um as as best as possible and working helping you realize your goals and you'll see him certainly at the at the first time we're meeting and then throughout the throughout the weekend or throughout the three days and of course your concierge who you've all been receiving emails from and we which is, these are all jfn staffers who are who are your your assigned sort of staff help if you have a question you can email them directly you can find them on site certainly and we are all available to help you uh, as you need so that's let me see if i can figure out how to stop sharing the screen there we go. Um, okay, great. Thank so you. that's us thank you and with for, I just wanted to pause for a moment to re remind everybody that if you have any questions i know we went through a bunch of things really fast we might have just touched upon some things that you had some questions about um please feel free to chat us at the bottom of your screen should have a ch the chat function and we will respond either for everybody or if it's more of an offline type of question we're happy to respond individually and like david said this is just the beginning of a conversation you each have a concierge and any other staff person here at jfn is really happy to to assist so that i wanted to just go over a few rules and regulations for us to all work very well together and enjoy our time in the best way. I'm actually just gonna look down for a moment and read from, from a sheet so that I can get the wording correct and, and show you how serious we really are to make sure this be a very comfortable, safe space for everybody. So one thing is the anti-harassment code of conduct. So JFN is committed to creating an environment that exemplifies Jewish values such, such as kavod habriot, human dignity, this code of conduct was created in partnership with the Safety Respect Equity Coalition. The coalition works to ensure safe, respectful, and equitable Jewish work, workplaces and communal spaces by addressing sexual harassment, sexism, and gender discrimination. So we, we worked in, in, in collaboration with the experts in the field to make sure that we got it right. And you can find it on our website, jfunders.org slash conference for the full for the full code of conduct. And this is also a non-solicitation event. So nonprofits can only participate as invited speakers and they all sign a non-solicitation agreement. And some funders may be looking for others to invest in their projects and are very passionate about it. And if anything, if anyone feels uncomfortable, if anything feels uncomfortable, also tell a JFN staff person. Most people come with really good intentions and are just excited to share. But if you feel like you would like some support in ending a conversation or talking to somebody and just you know making sure they understand the best way to to share their excitement about their project, please let us know. I'm really there um, and happy to assist. Make this a really wonderful experience for all of us. Be there together. And with that, um, 
I'm going to go back to David, who's going to go through some of the website and the app, which is a wonderful tool to also help enhance your networking ability and just helpful in helping you figure out where to be and all of that. So back to you, David. Thank you. Great. Thanks. So hold on one second while I share this again. Okay. So I'm going to just take two minutes to kind of explain what the um, the the value of the app and the uh, and the uh, and the website, and then we'll open for questions for in general, and then after that I can do a full, real like fifteen minute demo on how to really use the app and the and and the website in more in more detail if anybody wants to stay on for it. Um, not critical if you've already played around with it and you feel comfortable with it. But what I mainly wanted to show about you know, about the schedule, you know, I'm sure many of you have already been in. You've looked at the schedule. Um, you've signed up for events. Certain events actually require RSVP, like those dinners on Monday night or uh, the arts tour, things that are basically seating limited. We have to know, of course, who it's gonna be uh, ahead of time. Outside of that, individual workshops, if you mark it in your schedule, that's great. We love to know who's interested in, in things and who's coming to things. Not mandatory, of course, for you to do that, just, but if, you, if you'd like to do that for your schedule, that's great. But the main thing with the website is to be able to network. And so the, the things that are there for you, this is, as an example, in the attendee list, you can see everybody who is coming. You can search it based on uh, information in their profiles, which includes funding interests, where they went to school, what languages they speak, personal interests and hobbies, like all sorts of different ways that can help you find people who would be interesting for you to talk to, both personally and professionally. Um, and when, you go, and when you click into any of those people, you will see their profile information. Um, in this slide, it's not showing, but if you scroll down, you'll see how they answered some of those questions. You also have the option then to send them a message, uh, which they will receive in an email from the system. So your contact information is not given away. We take the user privacy very seriously. Uh, you can ask them if they'd be interested to connect or ask them a question about their experience, whatever, whatever you like. Uh, and if you want to try to actually schedule time to sit with them, there is that schedule meeting button which allows you to, uh, to do so. So I didn't put it on, I didn't put a slide for it, but the other thing, of course, that is, is uh, let's go back a little bit. You can see the communicate tab up top. Under that, you'll see uh, what's called a discussion board and sort of like a Facebook wall, you can post, uh, post an idea, a question, a, uh, a comment, you can ask if anybody's interested to join up for a conversation about, you know, really anything. Um, the information that comes through is collected data every day and gets sent out and it, all the all the posts that are made over the course of the day get collected and sent in an email i think you saw one this morning that went uh although it appeared to be blank because there was nothing had been posted i'll be sure to add a test message uh today so or a sample message so that it, to hopefully prompt it a little bit but if those of you are you know interested in in raising any questions or posting any questions there today that'd be great so with that i think I would pause for your open open questions tomorrow. However, you want to do that, whether by chat or open open chat, open talking. And I'm we're here to any of us are here to answer whatever we can do for you. Thank Don't you. Be shy. So, uh, right, exactly. Don't be shy. We know there's a lot of information. If there's anything small or little that you feel you would like to ask now, we'll. We'll pause for a few moments and see what might what might come up. Sure. Oh, hello. Yeah, to answer your question, uh, there's a question in chat from uh, about how cold is the hotel. So my experience in being there uh, for site visits and the like is that it is not over air conditioned. Um, it has been comfortable for me. Um, everybody's, you know, internal temperature runs a little differently. So certainly, I would I would suggest you should bring some layers just in case. Um, the, we, we can, we, you know, of course, if we find that it is overly cold, especially in the morning, we can, we can turn on the heat for a little bit, but in, in March there, especially it's should be mid seventies. Um, I can't really do the Celsius translation. I'm sorry, but, uh, but it, it should be pretty decent inside. Mm -hmm. Very good. I would 
I will ask a question. Is it uh, warm enough to use the outdoor pool? Very much so. Yeah? Yeah. So we should bring our swim case. Yes. Uh, yep. swim there is the, uh, the funding in Israel reception, which is on Sunday night after the main party. That's going to actually be around the pool. So at the very least, you know, we hope people would put feet in the water and have a, have a drink and hang out. Have a nice mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's it's definitely swimming water. Oh, we have another question. Are there particular breakout sessions? I'm sorry, breakout sessions you suggest for first timers? That's a good sure. question. So that's sorry, a little siren behind me. Uh, it's a good question. There, you know, a lot of the sessions are pitched kind of at a at a general level, like not specifically first-time attendees or, 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 or first or newer philanthropists as opposed to more experienced. Uh, in both cases, I think it's really about driven by what's your interest. The, like especially for in the impact investing bootcamp, for example, if you're interested in, in learning and impact investing, that is getting split into two tracks where one, uh, for people who are, who are less uh, knowledgeable or, or, or involved in impact investing, there will be an opportunity for them to have sort of their own, their own path within that, while those who have done some can have kind of a different experience. Um, but outside of that, most sessions are, are kind of, are, are generally pitched. On Sunday afternoon, you'll see one called the Philanthropist's Toolbox, which is great, especially for people newer to the ideas and field of strategic philanthropy that will help sort of broadcast a lot of different processes and, and techniques of, of doing strategic philanthropy. But I think you can be guided by your interest and you'll, mm -hmm. you'll fit in comfortably wherever. I agree. The other thing that I would suggest is that if you're, if, go to the ones that might be less busy and also go to the receptions, possibly because there might be more opportunities to talk to the person next to you. And if that's what your interests are, read through the descriptions and see the ones that might be more interactive. Most of them will, won't be all frontal, but if you want to have like that networking opportunity, there are some, some of the retreats, like the donor retreat, I believe will have probably more of a atmosphere of talking back and forth to each other. Um, the grant makers retreat as well. So that's, that's a way that, you know, there's built in networking throughout throughout the program. That might also be an easy way to get to know more attendees. Absolutely. I would like to add from personal experience. I mm -hmm. always, I don't remember names. I, <laughs> says, I never know from where I know them. Don't worry because each one of the members at, uh, of the attendees has to, to wear this mm -hmm. uh, with the name. And mm -hmm. on it, it's also written from where they are. So uh, don't be shy to just, you know, stare it at, at it, read it, and also to ask, so where are you from? And, and uh, it is, it's, very, it's very important to overcome our shyness. And I speak from experience because I'm not a very outgoing person, but uh, going to the conferences has, has taught me a lot about it. So, That's good advice, thank also, you. Also, funders are uh, invited to go to the funders retreat, which is very, uh, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Great. Very good. Okay. Um, all right. So, so with that, I will, I will say thank you again to Shula and David for, for sharing all of this with us today. And thank you all for participating. I think you all made a, the right choice for just even coming on this, I think is, is a good way to start making sure you have the best experience possible um, to, to be thinking about it a few weeks in advance of how to make this experience great. And like we said before, please reach out to us if you have any other questions. We are happy to, to answer and to help you customize your agenda as much as, as you need. So don't be shy and reach out. And if anybody, like I said, want to, if you want to stay on for 10 minutes, I can do a little demo of the actual app and, and website. Uh, if you don't feel you need the help, that's perfectly fine. But we'll give a pause for those who want to want to jump off to do so, and then I'll I'll start my exciting demo. Okay.
So thank you. I will say bye bye. See you in Palm Beach. Uh, thank you. Bye bye. Bye, Shula. Thank you. All right, great. Do we still have a few? I'm we not. have most everybody's oh, staying, so that's wonderful. <laughs> okay. So uh, some of this might be super basic and you've already sort of figured it out, so forgive me, but I should really start from the beginning, which is to say if you have not yet logged in or you um, or need to log in, when you, go, when you come to the conference website, the first thing you're going to be presented with is this screen. If you don't know your password, you can click forget the forgot your password link, you put your email in, what that's going to do is send you an email, which will look much like this one. You click the sign in button and that will log you in automatically. So let me not sign in automatically because that's going to open up another browser that you won't be able to see, but oops, what's happened? Sorry, don't mean to stumble so quickly and so soon in the demo. Okay, let's get, anyway, when you click the sign in link in your email, it will automatically log you in. So you don't need to know your password for that. Once it logs you in, it will, if it's your first time in the, in the system, what it's gonna take you to immediately is here to edit your profile. And if it's not your first time in the system, you can come here directly by clicking my account and edit my profile. Um, you can upload a photo onto your profile, which we heavily recommend because it makes the, not only make you look more friendly and interesting than someone you'd want to talk to, but adds you know, more visual, uh, visual and plus, you know, approach to the, to the attendee list. Uh, you can now set your password if you would like. So if you want it to be something different or something that you'll at least know and recognize, you put it in there. Um, if you, your title and company name, so this would come, this would come directly from your registration data, but you can change it, of course, if you want. Um, New York, you can, like so. Um, oh, interesting. On this one, you have to click the select an option, then you pick it from the drop down arrow, which I didn't realize is how this is working, but in any case. Um, oh no, this is doing something different with me. Never mind. Um, long story, not important. When when you are presented with this as a first time, uh, you can just choose United States or wherever you are, and there you go. You can put in your bio here. Uh, for the individual profile questions, like at the comments, the one topic I'd love to teach other participants and the one topic I'd love to learn more about from other participants. And these are what we think are the most important questions because this will help us, our, our, the various concierges and Benji, our MC to really help try to figure out who should we, meet, who should we try to have you meet if, that, if you'd like. You can enter whatever answer you would like. You can also choose some of the popular ones. So you can choose that. You can also enter that you know your own thing that you want to learn about, um, you know, the Open Arts in Israel. Now the thing is, because I know some people have missed this, you have to in typing whatever you want to type. That's great, but you have to then either hit return or select it to turn it into a tag, and then then it will sit on your profile. So you can add whatever you like for what you want to learn about. Here's um, grant making tool. Um, Sorry, sorry, here's grant making tools and techniques that you know, issue areas that you fund, um, languages that you speak. You can pick ones right off the list, personal interests and hobbies, what countries you've lived in, uh, what universities or colleges you've attended. And when you're all done, you hit save and away you go. Um, great. Now, the next. It should be saving. Sometimes it's a little slow. Um, there we go. So it's all saved. Now, what I would next suggest we do is take a look at the how to navigate the schedule. So under the program and schedule tab, you'll see the under agenda. Here's all of our 
schedule options. And as you go through, you can click plus to sign yourself up for any session that you're interested in attending. Um, you can, you know, that you're going to go to the opening plenary. That's all simple. Now on the app, so you, I was going to show you this in the app version, but it's, oh, I wonder if I can't get in, can't be in both at the same time. That might be what's happening. We'll stay with, we'll stay with the desktop version. Forgive me. Um, okay. So anyway, as you go through, you can go through the whole agenda. You can sign up for most things. Um, the dinners on Monday night, let me scroll to there, um, are all uh, now sold out or, or fully booked is, is what it amounts to. You can join the wait list. There are some that I'm fairly confident we would still be able to squeeze people into if you have not yet uh, chosen one. So that should all, that should cover the basics on this. For, and then for, if you look at my agenda, it will show you the items that you have signed on to or put into your schedule. And we can talk a little bit more about that later. But let's look at the attendee list because this is the, the most important thing, I think, for purposes of networking. So here is our big list of attendees. And if you click on to the details of any individual person, like let's look at Sophia here, uh, you can see her bio. She has answered some of the profile questions. You can see what she's interested in funding, uh, where she's lived, you know, where she went to college, all those kinds of good questions. And if you want to send her a message, you can click send message, send her a note, which we're not going to do because she'll be confused. But click send and it will it'll go through. Uh, we'll talk about scheduling meeting in a minute. But if you're back here, now the other thing that you can do here on the search box in the whole attendee list, if you want to look at, um, like, here's the question of what grant making tools and techniques are you skilled in? If you want to look at everybody who is, who is skilled in capacity building, and you click that, it will show you everybody who has marked that in their profile, which is a great, op, op, great way to, um, to highlight that. Uh, you can also search for everybody who is in capacity building and who is also in, let's say, New York, so state of New York. Now it's going to show you everybody, it's going to show both these things. It's not, it's not either or, it's both New York and capacity building. And now we have this list. And with any of these people, you could then you know, message them or whatever you feel is, is appropriate. Um, you can further narrow it. You can look only at people who are speakers, only at people who are um, on, on staff or sponsors. I'm not quite sure why that would ever be helpful, but it's certainly there if you're interested. You can see you know, people who have lived in any of these, any of these countries. Um, and you can get rid of the ones that you've already marked by clicking out the X like so. And where was capacity building? Here it is and deselecting that. And so then now we're gonna look at everybody again. And now if you look at who lived in the Ivory Coast, which is interesting, and there he is. So, great. Um, let's see, next thing I should, so under the communications tab, uh, or well, we talked about how to send a message and start you know, talking to somebody. Uh, if you want to try to schedule a meeting with Eric, if you click schedule a meeting, you'll have the opportunity to, you can also add another person into that meeting. So let's also, we could say we're going to add Tamar. So if you click Tamar, you'll get all the Tamars who are in the system. So we want to try to add Tamar. Um, so we are all set with that. We add them. Now you can continue and you can now try to find a time when we could, when the three of us could meet. So it shows when I'm busy here. Um, it will also show when they're busy if there's anything marked in their schedule. But you can basically, let's say we want to try to have breakfast with them at eight. We click there at eight. You can expand the time just like doing a calendar listing in, in 
sort of your email program. You can offer a location where you don't have to. You think you can write your own. Um, um, nope, you can only have to do one of ours, but I'll see what we can do with that. Um, you can put in the name of the meeting, get the description, send the invitation, and they'll get that invite, and they can either accept or decline as, as they're interested. Um, so what else can we do? Um, those are the real basics. Um, I think we should talk a little as well about, you know, here an agenda. Um, you can, from here, you can export the list if you're interested. Export your um, your specific agenda into your Outlook calendar, and which will sync to your phones and the like. You can print the agenda, um, and all of that is to the good. And the last thing, really, under the communications tab, like I was mentioning earlier, with the discussion board, if you want to post a a message that will go to everybody in that daily digest email, and I will do a, a sample message later today, um, you can here by clicking new conversation say, um, interested to talk about whatever you want. Um, Epidemiology is on everybody's mind right now. And then click send and what that will um, join me Monday for breakfast, something like that. And then people will see that on the board. They can respond to it. They can say, I'd be happy to. Where would you, you know? You can also use this more, more purposefully, like to ask a specific question, like is anybody interested in you know, helping me understand better how, how the, the Israeli you know, um, Bagrut exams work, you know, some, any, anything to that, to that effect. Um, and you see who's out there and who's interested to, to offer ideas. So that's what I can um, tell you. Uh, I'm happy to stop talking and answer any specific questions or further whatever uh, is helpful to you all. That's great. Thank you. All right. No questions? All right. Good. <laughs> I mean, right. Well, there's a there's a lot of different a lot of different functionalities there. When you were showing, I didn't even I didn't even realize as I was playing with the app before, I didn't even realize some of that. So that's great. Thank you for for sharing that. Um, okay, and I think with that, you, we will wait for another few moments for questions, but again, I'll, I'll say again, we are here. As you download the app, if you have other questions, please let us know. On site, we will, there'll be lots of staff around that will be able to, to help you at conference, get as you get more comfortable with it, if you have, if you have questions, and, and and so we are here, we are here to, to be helpful. Okay, um, and with that, I would I'll say um, goodbye for now. See you in sunny Florida, hopefully in just a few weeks. Yep. And look out for more emails and more information that will be coming your way um, as we'll keep you updated on, on things that are gonna be coming up and, and things that you should be looking out for at conference. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Um, Rosenthal. Wow.